Hello, Stuart here from SPB Media. We are a digital marketing agency based in Dublin. I launched SPB Media in 2019 after working as a national sales rep for the previous eight years. Back then, I would spend my days talking directly to business owners all over Ireland. Digital marketing has always been something I am hugely passionate about, but I was finding out that from coast to coast, the majority of business owners really did not feel the same. Not because they weren't passionate about their business, not at all. Mostly, they were confused when it came to how to market their business online. Pretty much just overwhelmed with the number of social media platforms, different search engines, and with print media still fighting to be in the mix. Things just aren't as simple as the good old yellow pages days. Uh, can you keep it for me? My name, oh yes, it's J.R. Hartley. So when I was on the road, I would casually ask business owners what they did when it came to their SEO for their business website. 99 times out of 100, I was met with this. Either they didn't even know what SEO was, or worse, they knew what it was and completely ignored it. I think we can all agree that those days are gone. Every business owner now recognizes the power Google has in the online world. Google is a brilliant, brilliant thing. I make no apologies for being a massive Google fan. At its core, the business model is simple. Google wants to serve the user up precisely what they want when they want it. The more they do this, the more we keep coming back. And within that is the rub for business owners. Google calls the shots and us, as business owners, need to learn how to understand it and navigate through all of this. Is it easy? No. Can it be time consuming? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely it is. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Search Engine Optimization is the ongoing process of improving the quality and quantity of free traffic to a website or a web page from search engines. SEO targets unpaid traffic rather than direct traffic, where someone just types in your website address, or paid traffic where they click on an ad. The term SEO includes the words search engine, but I think we can all agree and accept that Google is now the only show in town. So let's get started. Here are our five SEO wins you need to know. First up, Google My Business. Do you have this app on your phone? If you were to only take one thing away from this video, using and understanding this app and what it can do for your business is it. Google My Business is one of the few cheat codes in business. Your business profile is where you can reply to Google reviews, set your location on Google Maps, display your opening hours, and so much more. Google is throwing huge resources into this and has recently started advertising on TV, urging people to leave reviews for local businesses. Mm. Gold is green, much love. Support local businesses you love with a little help from Google. So let us get into this system, what it is, what it likes and what it can do for your business. It hasn't been all number one hits for Google. They have tried for years and years to get into social media and have largely failed. What they have done with Google My Business is to take a lot of the best elements of social media and apply them to businesses. Instead of creating personal profiles, they have allowed businesses to build and control their own profile and it all works in a very similar way to social media, which brings us to what it likes. Like all social media platforms, Google My Business wants to be fed. You have got to feed it content, fresh original content. To ensure it receives this, Google My Business does something that no other platform does. It deletes your post after a period of time. You can't just throw up a load of posts in one burst and then sit back and relax. We all wish it could be possible, but unfortunately, it does not work like this. <laughs> Google My Business is set up in a way that you have to keep feeding it. Google wants new content all the time. If you are a restaurant, you can post your menu every week or month, as well as your daily specials. A builder or home improvement company can share photos and videos of recently completed projects. 
just like on Facebook and just like on Instagram. The key difference is that nobody goes to Instagram to find a plumber. Sure, the plumber can find you on Facebook, but if your sink is leaking all over the bathroom, you are going to go to Google. Oh, fuck. Lastly, what can Google My Business do for your business? This one is easy. The business owners that understand this system and play by Google's rules will be rewarded by being shown to more and more potential customers. That's it. It's that simple. Play ball and promote your business in the way Google wants you to, and you will get customers. Great success. Lastly on Google My Business, let's talk about Google reviews. Do not be afraid of Google reviews. Reviews are a massive ranking factor. Google is just not going to recommend profiles with low scores. And so the process of asking a customer for a Google review should be treated as part of the whole customer experience. When a job, transaction or order has gone well and you know the customer is happy, then the single best thing you could ask that customer to do for your business is to leave you a five-star Google review. Don't just ask for a review, ask for a five-star review. Obviously, use discretion on this, and if you have just dealt with the customer from hell, maybe don't ask that guy for a review. Rick, have you ever heard the expression, the customer is always right? But should that customer find their way onto your Google profile and leave you a dreaded one-star review, do not panic. If a customer is that upset that they will take the time to find your profile and leave a bad review, you have to shift your focus to your Google profile and future customers. You are allowed one reply to a Google review, and when you are replying to a one-star review, we strongly recommend that you write it from the point of view that you are talking to everyone else on the internet and not the customer who left the review. Other future customers will be able to read this. Now, if your company did genuinely make a mistake, own it. Everyone makes mistakes. If the customer is an unreasonable keyboard warrior, then you can't really do anything about that. But you can show everyone else that your business did all they could and remained calm, professional, and reasonable. Number two, keywords on your website. This step can be easily overlooked and you would be surprised how many companies miss this one. Research shows that over 95% of people only look at the first page of search results. Within that, half of the clicks go to the first three searches. Unfortunately, this means that you have to get the keywords bang on. Ever Google something and it says that over 3 million results have been found in 0.85 of a second? In that time, Google has taken your search term and applied it to every one of these results and then displayed everything in a ranked order based on the relevance of where you are and what you are looking for. It is fair to say that Google does not have the time to go back for a second look. An important starting point when using keywords for SEO is doing keyword research. This is how you find the right keywords to include on a web page in the first place. Keyword research also helps you come up with your content strategy by creating content around the terms that you know your audience is looking for. First, compile a list of the terms that you think your potential customers might be searching for. Next, you can find related terms by searching on Google and then scrolling down to the bottom of the page. Here you can see what other keywords people have been searching for. Very quickly, you can establish a comprehensive list of keywords to use as the foundation of everything you do for your business's SEO and digital marketing. Your business name is what it is. No one says it or sees it more than you. And if someone is Googling your actual business name to find your number or get directions to your shop, then that is amazing. That's half the battle right there. The customers who don't know about you are obviously not going to Google your business name. They're going to go to Google to search for the product, service, or information they are looking for. For example, if you are an electrician in Dublin, you need to make sure that the words electrician and Dublin are in your website title. 
that these words are contained within the first paragraph of text on the homepage. They need to be in the heading tags and also on the image file names too. Google assigns a quality score to a website as it scans it, and it is looking for all of these things. The higher your quality score, the higher your website will rank. Did you ever click onto a website and it doesn't load up? Website loading speed has been used by Google as a ranking factor since 2010. In 2018, Google really ramped up the importance of page speed, particularly for mobile searches. When the user has a slow experience on a website, they are much less likely to find what they are looking for or purchase in the future. Over 50% of all visits are abandoned after only three seconds. As they say, you only get one chance to make a first impression. Here are three ways you can improve your website speed. Number one, image size. We put this item first because it's usually the biggest win. In most cases, images usually take up to 50 or 90% of a web page. Image size is the number one contributor to the page weight and this affects page load times. If your website runs on WordPress, there are loads of great plugins that will automatically compress any image you upload. Even if you are not using WordPress, there are lots of options out there. Your goal here is to try and compress the image to the smallest file size possible without reducing the quality of the image. You have to find that balance. Number two, upgrade your hosting. This is one tip that I don't see enough people talking about. You can clean up your code and compress images all day long, but if you spend the bare minimum on website hosting, your site isn't going to load quickly. That's probably because you're sharing a server with thousands of other websites. Like everything in life, when it comes to hosting, you get what you pay for. So if you're serious about improving your site's loading speed, it might be time to upgrade to a premium host or to a dedicated server. Number three, Activate browser caching. This allows users to store parts of your page in their browser so that the next time they visit your site, it will load much faster. This won't do anything for first time visitors, but it works great for returning customers and works really well if you are sending out abandoned cart emails. Next up, blogs. So I wanna strike a really positive tone here, but I, I'm afraid I have to be honest and tell you that blogging, it can be a pain. For it to work, for it to really work, it needs to be fresh and it has to be done regularly. One missed month of blogging can turn into six months before you know it. But honestly, with all of that said, it is so, so worth it. And if you are not pushing through and pumping some of your time into blogging, then you are missing out. To help attract an audience, you have to add value to your customer. Sitting down to write a blog this should always be the goal. Make it about the customer and their needs. What would you rather click on? A page titled, how to promote your blog, or a page titled, buy my consulting services? By creating a blog that is of value, you can attract an audience and eventually convert them to customers. Having a blog and writing about important topics that are relevant to your audience establishes yourself as an authority in the space. It enhances your professional image. Only 1% of internet users actively create new content, while the other 99% of their participants simply view it. By blogging, you separate yourself from the 99% of people that don't blog. Standing out is essential in an increasingly competitive online space. One of the greatest benefits of blogging is connecting with others. You don't just grow some followers on social networks or email lists. You build genuine relationships. You make connections with people you wouldn't have met otherwise. Something that surprises many people is that they can develop a fan base through blogging. If you attend events in your industry, you will usually get recognized by people you've never met. But the people you meet at the beginning of your blogging journey will be your most loyal fans if you continue to cultivate your relationship with them. Last up, Google Analytics. Do you know how many visitors your website receives each month? Do you know where traffic comes from? Do you know what the website bounce rate is? Okay, so analytics isn't technically an SEO technique, 
But to fully understand if the changes you are making and the work you are doing is working, then your answers will always be in the numbers. Did your new blog draw any new visitors in? What topic or angle works best for you? Are you ranking any higher on Google for your top keywords? So of everything we do here at SPV Media, we value the numbers the most. Carving out time once a month to look over your website numbers is vital to the future and longevity of your business. If you have a rival or competitor business in your industry that seems to be everywhere online, they just seem to dominate Google. There is a very high probability that they do look at the numbers and have refined their SEO down to the key areas that work for them. Let's take a closer look at some of the ways Google Analytics can help your business. Most websites don't need to reach everyone. There's usually a specific type of visitor that's most valuable to you. Google Analytics provides information on who the people visiting your website are in terms of demographics, geography, and their general interests online. You can see what browsers they use and what devices they're coming from. If your website offers a different experience on one device or browser versus another, you may be losing some visitors. Maybe your website has been optimized for a wide computer screen, but maybe mobile devices are the main source of traffic. Seeing how many people visit your website on their mobile or through Safari lets you know how important it is to optimize for those people too. For your website to do its job, whatever that might be, people have to be able to find it. Google Analytics has an entire section called Acquisition, which is devoted to providing you with information on how your website visitors found you. Google tracks how many people land on your website after clicking a link in search results, which is just good old SEO. How many people come from links shared from social media, from other websites, uh, from paid ads, and by typing your website directly into search. This section shows you which of your efforts are working. Are all those hours keeping your Facebook page or Instagram feed constantly updated actually doing anything for your business? This is where you will find out. Pretty much every website will have some pages that get more traffic than others. And you'll also have pages that keep people on the site or achieve more conversions than others. If you have content that's ranking high or getting shared a lot, that brings a disproportionate amount of your traffic. Google Analytics will help you identify it. Just as importantly, if some pages do particularly well at converting visitors to email subscribers or customers, Google Analytics helps you identify those as well. You can pinpoint the pages that are working the best for your various goals. You can analyze why they work and shape a strategy for your website moving forward based on past successes. The path to making your website a key player in your business's success lies within this system. If a software rep called to you to sell you a system which gave you all this information, you'd immediately be thinking, yeah, it sounds great, but how much will this set me back? The great news is that you don't have to shell out anything. Google Analytics is 100% free. So no matter what your marketing budget is, you can afford it, guaranteed. Also, if you're not very tech savvy, Google Analytics is very intuitive for even newbie website owners with basic level tech skills to figure out. Thank you so much for watching along and I do sincerely hope you can take even one or two good tips away from this to help you dominate on Google. Here at SPV Media, we do everything that a business needs for the online world. We build and upgrade websites. Our SEO program has produced dozens of successful customers. We can manage and breed new life into your social media output. We shoot professional promotional videos, just like this one. And we can also help with any graphic design or brand identity projects too. All our contact information is on the screen now. And should you ever need us for anything at all, even if it is just for some advice, please do not hesitate to give me a call. Thank you again for watching.